Hi, I'm Steve Miller. Call me Slim. And this is the Ask Slim Market Week. It's a look back at what happened in the financial markets in the past week and a look forward at what might happen in the next week. And this has been a week we're all going to remember. The Dow Jones S&P 500 both down around 5% on the week. And that is the worst start ever for the stock market. Amazing as we've had this big decline. If you saw my predictions for the coming year, you know that I thought the high was going to be made for the stock market pretty much right at the beginning and that the low was going to made some, be made sometime in the first quarter. Go watch that if you haven't seen it. And uh, we have really started out like that is going to be uh, a true uh, prediction. Now, uh, this is all about China. China, the leader on the downside, down some 10% on the week. They had two days where they hit their 7% circuit breakers, and finally they said, well, they better get rid of those things. Uh, and uh, there is just, you know, when you have circuit breakers on, uh, there's just huge fear that people are going to get stuck and can't get out. So uh, it just brings uh, a ton of selling, and that's just the control of the market that just makes no sense. And uh, so they got smart, and they pulled their circuit breakers. Uh, the Chinese yuan, uh, eight straight days on the downside before it stabilized on Friday. Uh, they have completely lost control of their currency. Maybe they do want it to go down, but their actions, everything I see, is that they are trying to stabilize it and spending a lot of their uh, foreign currency reserves to do so, maybe even uh, spending some of their gold. But gold did get uh, a move up in the market this week. Uh, and gold stocks, well, some of the only ones that got some decent up moves. I'll show you that in just a moment. Uh, oil moves down again on fear of this world uh, economies slowing down very significantly and uh, as a matter of fact we've had some downgrades Barclays comes out and downgrades world growth US growth pretty significantly I'll show you that in a moment too and uh, we get a uh, market trying to rebound on Friday US payroll numbers came out better than expected the overnight uh, move in the S&P 500 very strong on the upside and it failed I mean sellers are just just waiting out there uh, to sell this market. We're going to take a look now at our 60-minute chart of the S&P 500 and uh, take a look at what happened in this last week. Uh, and uh, here is that chart coming up. You will see uh, that what we look at here is the gray areas on the chart are the areas of the um, intraday or overnight trading and the white areas uh, where the um, pit trading or the regular day trading are. So here's the overnight trading and there is the day trading. And uh, what these uh, tend to do is uh, give you a good sense for uh, how the uh, uh, markets will open when you get these overnight trades and they certainly uh, don't have to keep going in that direction. As you see right here, as uh, you saw this big downward crack overnight on Monday, and what a start there to the year. China hits that 7% circuit breaker, and they have to close it early. China PMI much worse than expected. The yuan very weak. Saudis then cut diplomatic ties with Iran, and other countries join. That really gets the markets nervous overnight. Uh, oil rallies, but then fails, uh, expecting that, well, a Mideast crisis may mean oil prices go up. No way. Uh, but gold and treasuries get a safe haven bid. Eurozone ends up down 2.2% to 4%. Big down moves there. And U.S. stocks uh, take a huge hit. The first worst day in decades ends up uh, the old to be the first worst day since 2001 because, well, it got this rebound right at the end of the day right there. So that is uh, what kind of saved it. But it was a bad start. 
Comes Tuesday, world markets uh, were narrowly mixed. China tried to stabilize the markets. The government steps in, buy stocks, uh, and uh, they extend the, the no-selling rule to large shareholders. That never, ever works. You just can't try to control these markets. They're just delaying the inevitable of someday they're going to step in and sell. How about China or at a 64 PE? you got to say huge trouble when it's uh, compared to the rest of the world. That kind of valuation. Then Citi comes out and cuts the U.S. stock market to underweight. That doesn't help either. And U.S. stocks, well, they were stable, uh, but then actually give it up and then come back at the close. You can see that. But Apple weighs on the markets as they come out and say they're 30% cut on a Q1 iPhone 6 production, and uh, Apple went into free fall pretty much for the rest of the week after that. Comes Wednesday, and North Korea explodes an H-bomb. At least they say they do. People are doubting whether they did it, uh, or there was just a big 5.1 earthquake. Um, I guess we're not going to know for sure. But then China drops the Y-bomb, and they just let the Yuan drop very, very sharply. Between all of that, we get all of this selling companies coming in overnight. Also, European stocks down about 1% end up off their lows. China gets a rebound up 2.2%, which doesn't last for long. U.S. stocks drop sharply and then rally and then can't hold it. Man, we've had a lot of that as these bids cannot stay up. Uh, some days we don't get much in the way of bids uh, anymore. Oil down 5%, sub $34 at 11-year low. The ADP kind of told us about the fact that uh, we could get some strong job growth up 257k but oil stocks are totally crushed 8 to 12 percent on the day ism comes out at 55.3 and that shows some slowing and uh, the fomc minutes come out and fed basically uh, was reluctant to increase they you know say they're still concerned that inflation is going to be low uh, and uh, they're also focused on the oil market quit looking at the markets fomc See, that's not your business. Your business is just your dual mandate, and that's even too much for you. Next comes uh, Thursday. China markets collapse. They're open uh, 29 minutes and hit the circuit breakers, and then uh, they close the market down. Beautiful. Well, then they the next day, or late that day, they suspend the circuit breakers, and uh, that, of course, brings some stability. Eurozone down 2.7%. Japan down 2.3%. U.S. stocks open sharply lower. Try to rally, and then they cannot hold the rally again. We have seen just a ton of that kind of action. Uh, oil below $33, and uh, it's down over 3% on the day on Thursday. Uh, Friday comes China. Well, it gets a bounce because they pulled the circuit breakers. Uh, Eurozone edges higher. It was up about uh, maybe 7 tenths of a percent, but it failed. Also, the yuan has stabilized. Uh, and U.S. payrolls come out huge, 292 with a big beat. U.S. stocks rally, rally. See this rally right in here? Up 30 points on the ES, and then the big fade is it falls to down about 7. Just incredible weakness in here. Barclays comes out and downgrades U.S. Q4 growth to just 7 tenths. AEO GPS massively weak on uh, their poor, poor retail sales. Hurts the retail group, of course. Goldman Sachs comes out also and cuts U.S. growth. And uh, the PE, now let's figure this out. If they say that earnings growth is going to be down 7% for the uh, quarter coming up, for the year coming up, sorry. Then if you take, let's say, a reasonable PPE at 16 times 107 earnings projected, that's the reduced amount, that gives you just kind of a normal 1712 price on the S&P 500. That's just down about 200 points from where we are right now, and that's why these rallies can't hold, and this market is in some serious trouble. So that is what happened in the last week. That was long. There just was lots and lots of background information. That was moving the markets. It's important to know what is moving the markets and uh, to give you some feel for the fact that the kind of trouble that this market's been in and why. Let's take a look at our earnings calendar for the next week as uh, we look at the earnings and
and uh, economic calendar. Of course, not much coming out yet in the way of earnings, but the following week they're going to start to pick up. And here is that earnings and economic calendar. So uh, earnings, uh, they're just going to start to come out. Of course, always the first one to come out is Alcoa of the big ones, and that comes out Monday after the close. And uh, we get CSX on Tuesday, <clears throat> and then they start to come out. JP Morgan comes on Thursday, as Intel does after the close. And then we have uh, Citigroup, U.S. Bank Corp, PNC, Wells Fargo, as we start to get the financials that start to come out first. Uh, as far as economic uh, news goes, there is really not a lot of market moving uh, events here, uh, news items that could come out. I don't see much in uh, at all that could happen. Uh, sometimes the beige book gives you a little move. Uh, consumer sentiment could get the market to move, but no big uh, movers there as far as uh, economic news. So I don't think that there will be a lot uh, that moves it, but there is plenty of news coming from overseas and everything is going to be focusing on China and the Yuan and uh, the moves uh, into or not into the U.S. dollar and how the safe haven bids come uh, in uh, the bond market or in the gold market as we have seen. So plenty there and uh, plenty to talk about. Uh, so that's it for the opening segment and we'll be back with the best and worst of the week. Best of the week? Well, almost nothing to talk about. It was basically golds that had an uptick, one other stock, in the golds, Barrick Gold, probably uh, the best gainer, uh, up 17% on the week. Here is that Barrick Gold chart, and you can see in here that it's been in this rising trend, uh, coming up from under $6, getting up to close to 9 over these last couple of months. And we're even looking for this to be a resistance area and to get a little bit of a pullback in here for several weeks. So uh, big gain in there in Barrick Gold, and... Uh, <clears throat> Not uh, much more there uh, to discuss. Uh, uh, Gold Corp uh, got a pretty good upside. That's GG, up about 9%, as did, as did in the silver, PAAS. Uh, that's up about 9%. Uh, that's on our list of best 12 for the year. Uh, a GDX gains about 7% also on our list, and uh, that's uh, about it in the golds. Uh, as far as uh, one other stock to discuss, Time Warner, TWX, on the discussion of the HBO spinoff, uh, got a very good pop. So this is the only other non-gold stock on my list that got any kind of a real upside move, and you can see in here as it moves up about 13% on the week. We had looked for a low. You could see these blue spikes right here. That's the timing of our expected low, and these are our cycle charts. And so that came a couple of weeks early for us, uh, but uh, overall not all that badly timed. And uh, there it is, a big gain, and the uh, only thing really to talk about uh, of any big gainer on our lists, Time Warner. So that is it for the whole best of the week list. Uh, the worst of the week list, it's much longer. <laughs> For the worst of the week, well, the list goes on and on and on. Incredible number of stocks that are down between 10 and uh, 29%. Let's talk about that 29% or right now, because I'm probably going to stop talking about this one pretty soon. Sun Edison, S-U-N-E. I'm not even going to show the chart. 29% on the downside, down to three and a half bucks here, and a company with huge problems. Man, it just shows you that buying these stocks uh, on the way down, well, just nothing but trouble. When something's wrong, something is wrong. Uh, let's uh, talk about some of these other stocks that something obviously is wrong. 
join manufacturing um, they continue to be in a ne very negative pattern we've shown that one down 23 percent on the week KB home this one's a disappointment to us as it shows up on our list of best 12 for the year um, they had a big miss for their earnings down 20 percent on the week material stocks down really heavily also uh, most of them down uh, 15 18 uh, percent Alcoa down 16 percent uh, FCX similarly uh, Schnitzer uh, ATI in the steel category those stocks also down 16 to 18 percent so big declines in the materials sector as uh, the slowing economy really is affecting these stocks uh, or the prospects for growth going forward. Um, let's uh, take a look at a few of the charts here. We're going to look at six of them right now in this worst list. Uh, first one that we're going to look at is APA. Now, interesting, APA, a natural gas stock, uh, Apache uh, had uh, just got hammered this week for like 19%. And we've seen natural gas get just a huge rally in here uh, as it's moved up from well, close to a dollar seventy up to about two forty. So uh, interesting in there that uh, the natural gas stocks, well, they are just plain suffering with the whole energy group. Here's the stock, and here uh, those of you that are new to my cyclical patterns, you can see that this uh, low right over here, we call this a nested bottom, made that low. The next low is is uh, projected out here in March. So big decline in here we believe that rallies that uh, will come in these energy stocks and especially this one in APA is likely not to last Pandora last week well Barron's had a negative article in there uh, that stock had a fake rally in the last uh, few weeks and you could see gets right up here near that 34 week moving average resistance up near that 50% Fibonacci retracement level we didn't believe the rally and here it comes down and makes a new low getting down to 1068 this week and down about 18 percent on the week this one also uh timed to make a bottom sometime around the uh we'll call it second third week of february so that is a very bad pattern and has been so csiq this is a uh, stock that is in the category of solar we expected a pullback i want to call this nice going a nice pattern as it's got up into the resistance area over here of course it is a Canadian stock. However, it's got a lot going on in China, and that's why the stock takes the big hit in here with China. We actually think that the stock is a buy on these dips, and I think it's going to be a great stock uh, again going up forward, and it is a super valuation. 2016 estimates on this stock in the 440 area per share, and you're looking at a $24 stock. So this is super cheap. We're liking it, and it had a big drop of 50 15% for the week. Now, what happens in these markets is that, you know, uh, when they really start to look weak, even the ones that were the best stocks, uh, they start to get sold. We're going to talk about a few of those here. First one we're going to look at is Tesla, T-S-L-A, and uh, this stock looking to us uh, like it was worthy of this big hit on the downside this week as we had the pattern as negative and ready to move down again. This is really interesting. Uh, those of you that are new to us uh, as far as the type of charting we do, this is a typical of our weekly chart and our members get these charts every week. And you can see the stock, look at this, gets right up to the 34 week moving average, our resistance zone that's in our all of these charts, and then rolls over, we expect this to be a declining period out into February and there is the big week on the downside in uh, Tesla uh, and a big help in that decline from the fact that sales came out on the low end of estimates of I'm sorry production deliveries uh, for Tesla and that really bothered the market and uh, we expect it to go sub 200. We've been expecting that. And we still think it's going to do that. That's Tesla. Next one uh, that we have to look at is Chipotle, down 13% on the week on top of massive declines. Look at this stock as it moves down from up here in the 752 area 
to all the way getting down to 411 as they have had these massive problems. Baird down uh, grades them. It's kind of a late downgrade for Baird, isn't it? We saw this failure of a cycle pattern, this crummy little rally right in here, and this one projects to decline all the way out into March. So that's kind of an alignment with our feeling on the big picture on the stock market as these stocks uh, continue uh, to be bad and get worse. Uh, CMG probably going to get bounces in there and I think it's going to move to the downside again after you get a bounce. Last one we're going to look at in here, uh, very worthy of a look, is Amazon, A-M-Z-N. Now, this has been a massively good pattern uh, for cycle watchers. Says, uh, shows you the upward stair-step movement in these cycles. The green are, are rising phases. The yellow are corrective phases. And here we are now in this corrective phase. The low expected in here in February. Look at the counter trend line from this high over here to the 50% fib right on the money the rising 34 week moving average all those point to 575 on the stock it's now at 613 we expect it to continue gyrating its way on the downside Amazon Mones Crespi downgrades it on the week and it loses 10% Finally, well, talk about crazy valuations. This is a crazy valuation. That is it for the worst of the week. I could have gone on and on. They've just been bad. That's it. And uh, we will be back with uh, our emails and tweets. <laughs> emails and tweets. Got lots of great emails over the holiday period. Been a couple of weeks since I did this. So I uh, picked out about seven good ones for you. Probably take us about 15, 20 minutes. So here we are. Uh, we'll get an email from SN and writes me, uh, I get trade recommendations on the SPY that are usually under 10 days. So in other words, subscribes to some uh, service. How would you trade something like this using options? Uh, for shorter term trades, uh, the highest probabilities uh, using options is usually the lowest potential monetary reward. So in other words, you're essentially doing uh, trades that are out of the money, capturing uh, decay in the options, and those usually give you uh, a small reward. Let's say that you're selling vertical spreads, you might sell them at about one third of the uh, distance between the two strikes. Uh, and uh, that uh, is going to give you uh, a, a decent probability of success in there, probably about 67%. Uh, and, but of course, uh, if it maxes out against you, you're going to lose twice as much as you would make. So, uh, But prob the thing is, is that when you're selling out of the money verticals, generally the implied volatility is overpriced. So that uh, gives you a slight uh, few percentage edge in there on the short side in these defined risk trades. It would be uh, short vertical call spread, short condors, which is two verticals, one on each side of the market, skewed butterflies, uh, diagonals are good too. The lowest probability is going to be buying out of the money uh, puts or calls uh, when you do that because, well, like I said, volatility is overpriced and you've got option decay working against you. You can also do stock replacement strategies uh, in, the, in the indexes and the spiders. Uh, and uh, those work for people that have bigger risk parameters. Uh, I think when you do that, you're going to be buying in the money uh, puts or in the money calls, and uh, they are going to be 60 deltas or higher in there so that you don't have as much extrinsic value or premium over the intrinsic that you're paying. So uh, good question, uh, and uh, I think that uh, you know, two to two, a two-week window is pretty tight in there, and that's for, of course, active traders. PC writes me and he says, I can't help but observe uh, that the qualities that it takes to be a successful trader are the same as qualities to be a successful business owner. Boy, that's good. Uh, keeping p and records, expense management, time management, strategies, uh, goals, uh, all of that. Uh, mental fitness, of course, too. Uh, and he wants to know, do I feel that uh, uh, trading education focuses too much on indicators uh, and too little on the business side of trading? Or is it mostly that uh, mental 
uh, failures bring the greatest challenges? What a great question. You know, truthfully, all of the aspects about learning about trading are important, everything that you mentioned. Uh, a small nuance is that um, most traders don't think about the business side of it at all. It's mostly about the individual trade uh, and thinking of it as a stepping stone to build their account size uh, to or to uh, get their account back to some level that they had uh, lost some money from. So that's usually the focus uh, for traders, sadly, uh, rather than looking forward and executing based on uh, good strategies and plan. The concept of doing it as a business is pretty much out of their mind. Uh, this uh, issue comes up a, a lot, surprisingly, uh, with startup hedge funds. I've worked with quite a number of them, and uh, they uh, tend to come out of a trading world, and they actually still have a big trading focus rather than business focus, and uh, that uh, tends to get them in trouble. So uh, I think it's really important to be working on the business aspects also. Uh, and yes, uh, I do believe that um, the uh, a broad uh, look at uh, all aspects of trading is really important. Um, if, uh, the, if you think about the reasons for failures, uh, the most to me of people I work with is on the mental side. Um, that, that can be actually be responsible for them not looking at the business side at all because they're so trapped in emotion and just you know so focused on trade that they can't think about business. Uh, I always start out when I work with traders on the emotional side. I never ever, in the first couple of sessions, we hardly even talk about trading at all because of how important it is. Uh, if you look on my website at the uh, five essential building blocks, that's my workshop coaching uh, curriculum, uh, you'll see in there I take a very holistic approach. And uh, that's a lot what I comment on and uh, do a lot of my videos on. KC writes me and he says, a question I have been meaning to ask you about as it relates to a comment on a recent question that he had sent uh, where uh, he had asked me something and I said to him that a specific level is a good target in a couple of weeks. Um, and he wants to know, how do you go about setting uh, a reasonable uh, price movements expectations relative to time? Well, I mean, anybody who's followed me knows that time is a very big uh, component of what I do. We're going to look at a chart here of Disney and uh, give you some example. The first thing I look at uh, is a cycle analysis, of course, and give me a sense of time in there, but then I use uh, support and resistance levels as a uh, way to uh, project levels. Now we're going to switch over here and look at the Disney chart. Here you can see that here. And uh, as I always do, uh, the weekly chart is on the left and the daily chart is on the right. So we're going to blow up this weekly chart for you to see right here. And what you'll see is that as I maximize this cell, that uh, w actually when uh, this was written to me a week ago, uh, I had said that, well, uh, that there was uh, uh, an expected decline in there. And those that looked at our uh, rankings and setups uh, special offer, which is free right now, uh, uh, note that we had Disney as a short, as a, um, uh, a level uh, two sell in there uh, and uh, believing it was going to go lower. So uh, this uh, cycle pattern that you can see in here, and you can see this as I trace out the cycles in here and how it follows these on the bottom. And right in here where it was asked of me, uh, there was still a lot of time to go. You can see that right in here where we project time-wise what the low is going to be, and I saw support down over here. So if we look at the weekly, it certainly looks like there was more time to go. But what I also said was, being that I knew there was more time to go, and let's just take a look here at the daily chart. I said that, well, it was in declining negative momentum as established by the slim ribbon right over here. That it had it, This was where the, the email count came. It had been moving up into that 13-day moving average, and I knew there was more time on both the weekly pattern and you can see here on the daily pattern. That was suggestive of me that the stock was going to break under 100, which was my target in there, and sure enough, the stock got under 100 now. So I, I, I do this combination 
of uh, charts where I look at weekly cyclical patterns and I look at support resistances and that's essentially how I project out time wise so good question gave me a good uh, a, a chance to uh, talk about that GW uh, writes to me wants me to look at Apple do analysis on Apple uh, and also on uh, a GILD Gilead so we're going to look at both of those Apple actually was a stock that uh, we saw coming down to support and had thought it would get a bounce. We had a short-term uh, long side trade on there, uh, a setup actually, which did not work. Uh, and uh, we're, you know, we've, we had some news come out on Apple and essentially that they said that they are cutting uh, iPhone 6 production in the first quarter by 30%. In other words, they've got huge inventories there. Of course, that came out after we had that setup, so we got it wrong. We pulled it, uh, and that's what we do when, the, when it moves away from uh, a favorable location. So let's take a look here uh, at the weekly chart on Apple, and you're going to see that we expected it to be declining in here uh, through this time period, this time window right in here. We actually thought a bottom was occurring as it approached this level here. That's what fooled us. Uh, and expecting it to upturn in this period right over here uh, and get up into that resistance area. Now it fell much much harder this week and expected the resistance areas are going to uh, be lower in here and uh, this stock now next resistance based on the weekly at a major support at about 94.75. Take a look here at the uh, daily chart and you can see that it is moving now into a resistant into a support area also but now this is the pattern that fooled us we thought this rally was going to uh, be able to hold up and then this news comes out now it gets down into this support zone when I look at that support zone here on the uh, daily chart that's it uh, comes all the way down to about 92 bucks so there's a lot of downside room and a lot of down Side time for this stock to fall and you could see out over here so I think any rallies you get in Apple uh, are going to fail here's where the momentum on the slim ribbon turned negative way up here at about 115 116 and you can see it absolutely fell apart after that so all these patterns now are not looking good in Apple and uh, that news really took the wind out of any possibility of a decent bounce that holds Gilead GILD D, um, what you said was you thought it was coming down to its support zone, wanted to buy it. <coughs> I thought there was a little more time to go and uh, before we bought it and wasn't. I thought it was a little premature, but that uh, you wanted to buy in the money calls and hopefully you held off on that because this was a big bad down week. I'm not favorable on this group at all, but I think this stock is coming down as you could see to an important uh, low time period support coming in right across here we'll call it about 93 on the stock it's trading at 96 and a quarter when i switch over to the daily chart that you can see here uh, you will see that uh, it has come down to support right here at about 96.40 and uh, here is about 92 on this daily chart support so uh, here we have negative momentum still in place uh, as uh, described by the slim ribbon right over here and that is suggestive that this uh, decline may still have a little bit more to go but the we're getting to a point we're expecting a bottom to come so uh, somewhere in this zone right over here we think we need to buy in the money calls as the trade but we're going to hold off here because of the weak market and certainly the weak group so uh, Gilead may not be the uh, best uh, choice right now uh, because well stuff is just plain out falling apart so uh, maybe in the next week or so we'll get some signs that that bottom is coming in place and Gilead will be a good one. Uh, next uh, email from a viewer it says I watched uh, your futures speak last week that's our Wednesday show where we do 25 different futures contracts and all the analysis you're seeing now we do in a lot of depth it takes about 40 minutes uh, and he says in particular I'm looking at the indexes you commented that uh, NDX the NASDAQ is barely off its highs and I wouldn't be shocked to see it go all the way down to a deep level at the 78.6 percent Fibonacci support area it's a lot 
lot of words there, right? He says, if hypothetically someone was to play uh, the higher probability, the better risk reward, on the short side, it seems that priorities would be to look at the NASDAQ and the X as it has the most to give up based on what we said. It hadn't yet fallen all that much. He says, uh, is there some flaw in that observation? And he says, could it be uh, that the NDX is being held up by the FANG stocks, F-A-N-G, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google, uh, and uh, that those are the darlings of Wall Street? That's a really a great question. I'll tell you why. Because, well, I've seen like, you know, uh, 41 years as a trader, uh, I've seen at least nine bear markets. And what happens is that, especially in, in free fall scenarios, is that uh, markets, when they accelerate to the downside, the, the favorites, those higher price stocks that have kind of avoided getting uh, falling because, well, the institutions are like hanging on to them because those are the ones they think are good. They're the ones they really start to sell really hard because the institutions, well, they get to the point where they need to re raise cash. Number one, they're losing money. Number two, their uh, investors are pulling money. So, you know, they have to raise money to sell and keep their cash levels up. So what they do is they go to these higher price stocks and they eventually sell them very hard. So I would say yes to that. But I think the NASDAQ is going to suffer the worst at some point. You can see that happening in Apple now. And Google is threatening a breakdown in here. And uh, I actually think that... Uh, uh, we're going to see these darlings, the ones that they love to hold on to, uh, falling very hard at some point. And uh, I think that uh, if you uh, want to see that uh, S and that uh, Nasdaq chart and where that 78.6% uh, support level is, well, take a look at Future Speak uh, for members. Uh, and speaking of the indexes, uh, we're going to take a look at uh, those and uh, some other markets, actually five of them in total, in just a moment when we get to our short-term view. Be right back. All right, this is our short-term view. And while well, we haven't done this in a couple of weeks because we had the holiday and what we did was bring our year-end predictions uh, in the middle there. So I uh, haven't uh, done this. And basically what we said a couple of weeks ago, uh, I would say pretty solid. We'd expected uh, oil to get a rally to about 39 and then pull off and uh, turn down again. That happened. We expected a rally in gold to over 1,100. That happened. Uh, we thought that the stock market would... Uh, uh, at some point move sharply to the downside and here we thought there was a lot of risk and that happened so uh, we would say that you know over the couple of weeks not so bad uh, let's take a look though at what we think is going to happen in the next week we'll start out as we always do uh, with a light crude we're going to only look at daily charts right now because well this is a short-term view but we take into consideration the longer term uh, uh, perspectives that we have that are on our weekly and monthly charts and uh, don't forget that uh, we are in our last week of our special no cost free peek at rankings and setups and uh, so this is the time to go look at that and keep your eye out for the special we're offering only for the next week in here till the 17th of January. Uh, and uh, if you haven't gotten that, then send me an email and uh, I'll send that to you. So uh, make sure that you sign up. It's a great new product, uh, rankings and setups uh, for investors, uh, swing traders, and option traders. All right, let's get to this light crude chart right now. We'll start out right there. And here we have uh, the daily chart. So we uh, got this rally as uh, we had anticipated up to that resistance level that was up near the 39 number. Uh, we're looking way down over here now uh, at oil that right here is where it came up, got close to that resistance level, and then it started to roll over. Now, uh, what we're expecting, now this is a 10-day low right there. This was that crazy uh, year-end uh, early low that happened there, threw things off. So we're expecting a rally in here, and that rally ought to take us to this resistance zone right there. Uh, that would be just a short-term rally. It all lives within this trend right over here, which is a down 
downtrend you see that so any rally in here should fail maybe it's just because China has a few days of settling down and uh, we think we're going to get a pop in here to about we'll call it 3520 to 90 into that resistance zone and then roll over again so we're going to call oil in a small up week take a look now at gold forward slash gc and uh take a look here uh, gold i want it to move out to uh a two-year daily chart to get these proper cycle alignment there you can see all the cycles as they line up properly and we're going to look here and you'll see this uh gray area is where that nesting was of the cycles and we expected this to have a bottom in there then if you remember see this little green area right there that's what we said was kind of the buy area we thought it would get down to around 1060 and then rally and get into the resistance over of this area of uh, 1100 man it did that got into that short-term resistance area and now we actually think it's going to have a correction and probably a modest one we're going to call a small down week in the gold market and we expect it to get down and test support this is around 1087 to 1081 in here over this next one to two weeks and then again we we'll expect it to be moving up uh, after that so uh, we're in a corrective period we're going to look for it to kind of chop and roll over in here and then give some ground in the low for the week getting probably into that short term support area so that is a look at the gold market now the euro currency forward slash 6e this one uh, moved down as this dollar got a bid in it right because it was uh, looking like a flight to safety into the dollar but man it got into that support buy zone right over there it bottomed a little bit earlier than we expected we expected it a couple days later and now has turned up this is actually an interesting sign it probably means that the China situation is going to settle down or quiet down a little bit. The dollar will pull back and we get a rally in here. So we're going to call for an up week uh, on uh, a, a slightly calmer period in equity markets. Test this resistance up around 110.10. Uh, Maybe even get above that to about uh, 111 right over there in the next couple of weeks. So we're in this rising area right over here and we think that you can buy the dips here in the euro currency let's take a look now at forward slash zn that is the bond market uh, make sure that you catch our uh, look at the um, big picture of the bond market which we just posted for members uh, and uh, that's for level two members or higher that can see all of our videos so let's take a look right in here at this short-term view i have a little different kind of stuff in here for you to see uh, do a little cycle lesson uh, while we're at it don't get a chance to do that for all the viewers very often uh, but here you can see this is the uh, big cycle pattern that was coming down right over here we thought that it was coming into this nested period where cycle lows were coming in and likely to get a rally it came early uh, by a couple of days and then started to move up into this resistance zone so very nice action as far as the cyclical patterns go so let's break down the cycles you see this bigger one right in here and you see the intermediate one and the smaller one so see these dots in here that's the lows uh, these little stars of each of the smaller patterns and you could see how four of them made up this whole big pattern beautiful right here is one two three and a little short in here but four you could see that right there and turning up take a look at that little star right over there that's the next one yes we're looking for as we look for a little settling down of the markets the haven bid to disappear and for and for us to get a pullback in here so that little star comes to about the area of 126.12 in the next week or so so we're going to look for a temporary pullback in the bond market but you can see this pattern's pushing up pretty hard right in here that's why this is only going to be a little dip right in there and then likely to move on the upside again that's probably the time period that the stock market is getting wailed on again onto the downside so that is a look at uh, the bond market which we think will get that little bit of a pullback anybody have any questions about those cycle patterns or how to get those charts send me an email slim at slim.com all right so uh well, let's talk about the stock market here it's had 
a huge decline, right? Uh, worst, uh, as we said, uh, in, well, ever. Uh, to start out the year, that, of course, is a bad sign. Uh, if you believe in the January barometer and the first five days are supposed to predict January and how January goes, so goes the year. So that doesn't really spell for a very good year, and my predictions were that it wouldn't be a very good year. Um, so uh, let's uh, take a look at the S&P 500 in here as it's had that big downside move and see how these patterns are setting up. Now, I guess we weren't 100% sure about the timing of some of these because, well, we were getting into the period of year end and a lot of things uh, happen in here uh, that uh, happen to change the markets uh, in a year end and sometimes they have to wait for uh, that uh, for those occurrences uh, to happen before it settles down. So uh, we're going to look in here uh, at the um, uh, S&P 500 on the cash. And here is that chart. Here is uh, what's happened towards the end of the year. Now, we uh, all along were saying that these patterns in here were suggestive of big downside risk, and certainly uh, that came. So this resistance zone, we were a little surprised it got that high when it got up there, but you can see how it stalled from that level right there. Then it has this big decline. This is a longer term 61.8% retracement level. That's a pretty key area. Area in there so we're now that we're here down uh, this is actually the uh, 12th day off of this low over here um, it's it's uh, actually the 13th day come to think of it that is we're getting to the point where we're going to get into this bouncing area and that's what we're going to expect we might get another day or so on the downside in here but we're going to look for this week to be um, very choppy and an upward bias uh, outside of the, the possibility of a total collapse in China, which I doubt this coming week. I think we're going to get some kind of an upturn in here, get a rally. So right now, based on these numbers, and they changed pretty fast, I sent out a, uh, a revised link to our subscribers because the uh, support and resistance has changed so much in this big decline. Uh, right now, it looks to me like we're going to get a rally back. We're going to call 1993 area right here as the possibility for a bounce. That's, yeah, it's about 50-point bounce in there in the S&P 500. We're not going to look for much more than that. Remember, that's the lowest resistance level we have right on here labeled. So we're going to look for a bounce in there. We're going to call it a very choppy up week with lots of risk that rallies continue to fail. Uh, but uh, we think it will find its legs for a couple days. Maybe we get one big up day in here, and it gets a rally. After that, the risks are going to pick up very significantly again on the downside for some more as far as major hits go in the stock market. So very, very risky stock market. Playing for this rally in here is really risky, but we're going to call it an up week uh, and uh, have in our mind this uh, really risky period that we're in uh, and not get crazy with anything we're buying. Our rankings and setups, we've been putting in only one buy a, a day if there's anything that sets up. So let's take a look at the VIX and you'll see these beautiful short cycle patterns that are in here that have been happening. Uh, this uh, r rally came right on time. You can see that there. We anticipated that. So what are we looking for now? Well, in the next, uh, let's call it week and a half, uh, it's likely that we may get a little more higher piece right here that it's going to pull over again. You see that timing right over here? So we said that the stock market's likely to get a bounce in here. It may start in the next day or three days. And this peak may come in the next day or three days. Then after that, we get into a period where the VIX pulls down a little bit. This is that area where we thought uh, that we would be looking at the beginning of the next stock market decline and big uptick here in the VIX. We really expect to get, you know, in the 30, you know, high 30, or 40 in the VIX before this is over with. Uh, so we're just entering into a period of modest correction in the VIX. This coincides with what we're expecting in the stock market. And uh, so a little bit of a bouncing period potentially in here, but overall tons of risk and you got to be careful 
when you buy this market that the rallies are just not going to hold up. That is our short-term view for the coming week. Hope you have enjoyed the show. Don't forget, still in this trial period for rankings and setups, and uh, we really want you to take advantage of that. We think it's one of the best ways for you to improve your trading, raise your probability of success, because what we do is give rankings on three different uh, time frames. You can, if you're an investor, a, a swing trader, or an option trader, and then uh, normally one to three times a day, uh, or one to three setups a day will bring you that uh, we believe are high quality entry periods. We're going to be wrong on lots of them, especially in crazy markets that have big moves. But basically, we believe that we're giving really favorable entry points and uh, that really should improve overall profitability for you. So please give us a whirl. We're going to you know, give a little discount for the next week only uh, if you sign up for three months. So if you haven't seen that uh, link sent out to you in the next couple of days let us know so uh, that is it for market week uh, I will see you next week and I'm always wishing you great trading well, I'm going to the and I'm going to do a